Hello and welcome to Trains Up North. In this video I show you how I make the platform surface for the Heritage Station. So this is just um, 2mm thick construction card that I bought from a well known online retailer. The cricket makers used to make the platform surfaces. So what I'm doing it is uh, using it to score out the um, individual um, stones on the surface. It does that um, to my own design, which took me a couple of hours to do um, on the app. So this is what it looks like when the cricket maker is finished. I'm just going to close it and see there some well defined stones so now we're just going around the edge of the platform with a really sharp scalpel blade and a steel rule keeping our fingers well away from the cutting edge as we do it and then the idea is that line and that line will then be freed and the rest of it and we can start once we've cut it all out um, painting it. Now not everyone will have a cricket maker so if you don't what you can do is mark out on your card where you want to put fine pencil and just mark the lines on. And do this one the other way around so it's easier for you to see. So you just mark, mark the lines on like that. you've done that you can go back to a sharp scalpel and a steel rule and just score the lines we're only wanting to uh, score it lightly we're not wanting to cut all the way through Keep going like that until we've got all the lines scored. And once you've got them all done vertically, we can move on to the horizontal. So, what I'm doing now is using an offcut of the uh, platform that I've already made. I'm just drawing the lines on. So lining the steel rule up. Drawing them on. And then we'll keep going until we end up with this. So now we're back. Um, I've drawn all the flags. You'll notice that they're roughly square and there's crosses. The reason I've put the crosses is that tells me which ones I'm going to cut and which ones I'm not. Because what we want to have is a nice little staggered pattern um, when we finish. So, as you can see on this one, the joints are staggered and that's the effect that we're going to go for. Don't worry if they're not perfect. If you go and look at uh, flags at railway stations, uh, you'll notice that they're not all perfect. Especially when you go and look at heritage stations uh, where they've 
there'll be bits where they've repaired platforms. You might find bits where there's uh, actually tarmac or concrete been used where they haven't had a flag to replace it. Um, so yeah, let's get cracking with uh, cutting these out. So again, it's much the same process as we did before. We're just going to score it and score it. Until we've done down the line, making sure that we only cut the ones that we want. Once we've done, we can rub out all those marks and you ought to see them once it's painted anyway. So I'm going to get cracking with uh, scoring these out. So the next thing I do is I just go over each piece with some very fine wet and dry paper. So this is 600 grit. And so just quickly going over Breathing any little bits where the knife's caught and uh, caused a bit of a rough edge. It also gives, in my opinion, the uh, legs a nice little texture. So we'll keep doing that once we've got them all and move on to painting. So to paint the platform surfaces, we've got a number of enamel paints from Phoenix Precision and they are dark sandstone, natural wood new concrete and mid sandstone. I will put the numbers of the paints in the description below. So here we have some enamel thinners, some clean spirit and some white spirit. The enamel thinners cost £7.50 from my local model shop for 250ml. The Clean Spirit costs £3 from a local supermarket for 2 litres and the White Spirit cost, I think it was £1.50 for 750ml. So this is our uh, platform surface. All the flags have been scored, they've been cut out and lightly sanded ready for painting. So I'm starting off with the uh, dark sandstone and I put paint on the brush. Don't want too much paint. I've not um, put any thinners in with this paint so it is just neat as it comes out the tin. And what we're doing is uh, painting it on in random spots. When you're doing this don't think about it. If you start thinking about it you'll find that you end up doing a pattern rather than it being random. So sometimes you might just want to do like a little shape. And we're wanting, we've got four colours. So doing a quarter of the flags makes sense. We're not doing it exact. We're not counting. We're just doing what looks, feels right to ourselves. Don't forget this will be weathered before it goes on the layout and if you look at flags go down go down to your local uh, heritage railway look at what they've got if you go down to uh, the modern station you'll probably find it's tarmac or fancy paving and it won't be 
figure out what I'm trying to portray. So this is a heritage line on my layout. So what better way to get it to look like a heritage line than uh, to go down to my local heritage station. Don't just go to one station, go to three or four. The size of the flags, again, it's just what, what looks and feels right. The area that you're trying to model, go and have a look at the stations there, as I keep saying. What, what have they got? Obviously, you can't go taking a tape measure down and measuring, but you've got feet that you can use to measure. You know how big one of your feet is. You can see how many feet the flags are. Photographs, either your own, someone else's. There's a wealth of information out there on the internet. And we can always go back and add more if we want. It's not an exact science, is this? So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the paint on like this, let it dry, I'll put some other different colours on and then I'll just look at it once I've done and I'll think, hmm, not got enough of that colour. So I'll just go back and add, add a bit more. Nothing wrong with doing that. So when you're building a model railway, Think of it as a marathon, not a sprint. One thing you have to do with these paints is before you open them, just give them a quick shake just to make sure. All the pigment inside is fully mixed. To be fair to Phoenix Precision, I don't have it very often with their paints, but some other manufacturers. Especially if you leave them sat for a while, the paints do seem to separate in the tin. The other things that you'll need when you're using this type of paint is, as well as your white spirit to uh, clean it, you'll need a cloth just to uh, give your brush a quick wipe. Again, just to, uh, especially when you're changing colours. So between colour changes, just give me a brush a quick wash in my spirit, and then a white and a brush. And even while doing this, you can. The, uh, the grey of the card underneath as you're doing it this method looks okay so maybe you want to just leave some of that into the silent tube and uh, I'm not saying this is the be best method or necessarily the method you want to use or the right method. Modeling is one of those great hobbies. 
I know it's been said before, and I'm gonna say it. But if you put ten people in a room that do model railways, then you'll probably get fifteen to twenty different answers. Channels new. I'd quite like feedback. You give me feedback, tell me what you want, what you like, what you don't, and I'll see what I can do. So now all the flags have been painted, we could leave it there, but for me it doesn't quite look right. I mean, we still need to add a white line along the platform edge and the stones just look too bright. So what we're going to do is just tone them down with some weathering. So when you're weathering there are a number of things we could use, we could use washes like this one from Vallejo we could use watered down acrylic paints just to tone it down cheaper than the Freedom washes give similar results I use both but today I'm going to use some soft pastels so I've got a set of artist soft pastels here and to do this technique I'm going to need them a tub scalpel and a brush so I could use a paintbrush what works better than a paintbrush a makeup brush so this tub is the lid off a vehicle from Oxford and I'm just scraping the surface of this grey soft pastel into the tub you will need more than you think and once I've got a fair amount. I'm going to stop, put that down, and we'll go for a like a, a greeny colour next. I'm putting a bit of green in there. Then what shall we have next? Let's go for a, a brown. If you don't want to do this, you can always use weathering powders. Loads of different companies make weathering powders. I use weathering powders sometimes, but give it a go with this. This is uh, definitely cheaper than uh, buying weathering powders and in my opinion works just as well. So we're putting the black in. When you're putting black in you don't need as much black and you put too much black in and uh, take over a bit. So then what you do is just mix it up Uh, it's looking still a little bit too grey for me, a bit too light. So let's just add a touch more black. It's always easier to add more black than it is to try and set the black out. And we're getting there. A little bit more, I think. Just add a small 
So now we've just put a bit of uh, powder on the paintbrush and we're just working it into the flags. You don't have to put this much on if you don't want. You can use it quite sparingly. And if you do it in circular motions like that, it'll sort of just go on nicely and you won't be able to see any obvious brush marks. One thing that's better than this paintbrush is a makeup brush. You can just throw it on like that. Uh, however, I didn't think my wife would appreciate me stealing a makeup brush and using it for modelling. So, there you can see I've just lost a little bit off the edge of the board. No particular right or wrong way to do this. Now, what I'm going for is quite heavy. As you'll see. The reason I'm going for quite heavy, it's a heritage railway. They operate steam and diesel. So you're gonna have a lot of soot and dirt coming off the uh, steam locos. And as you get your crews, coming off the foot plate, walking about, They'll be putting oil and dirt and stuff onto the, uh, the flags. Just tilt this one down a little bit. Like I haven't done the, the white lines yet. If you want, you can do the white lines before you weather. The reason I'm not doing is because on my layout, the uh, P-Way guys have been out painting white lines back onto the, uh, the platform heritage railway that I'm involved in they paint their lines every 12 to 18 months on all the platform edges so I've got here some, some water now you can see the streaks in this. What we do is just dip the paintbrush. I'm using quite a uh, wideish flat brush in the water, and then we dry most of the water off. So we're left with a fairly dry brush. And what we're going to do Is just go over the entire platform surface, just backwards and forwards with the brush. And by the end of it, all the powders will be blended. You don't want it too wet because 
it is charred after all. And it's too wet. It uh, won't do it much good. see that whether it's picking it up on camera it's just highlighting joints in the flags I'll do it again on this bit and then as you can see it's the brush has got It's just a case of experimenting until so you find something that's working for you. You might find that you have little bits where you've still got streaks. Like this streak here. That's not an issue. will be buildings on the platform. I've got a, got a dog hair on my ear. I don't want my dogs playing out, but he's, uh, he's joined me in my modeling room. So that bit there is a bit too dark. So what I can do is using the brush, wiping the brush between passes. At this point you might be thinking, oh no I've ruined it, but as it dries it will change. It looks, it looks darker than it actually is when it's wet. thing you can do is just dab it a little bit and you'll see where there's just uh, some of those pastels coming off. So like I said that looks a little bit of a mess now but when it dries trust me it'll be fine. Now that the weathering is complete, what we need to do is just seal it to, um, to prevent anything moving in the future when we're handling it. So how we do that is we just give it a couple of blasts with uh, some cheap fur spray. You can use glue, you can use varnish, but fur spray works when you've been using powders. 
So to do this, what we're going to do is get our platform piece. We're going to get some acrylic paint, which is white, small brush, piece of scrap plastic, and then some masking tape. And what we're going to do is get a length of masking tape. And we're just going to pop it on the platform surface, not pushing it down too hard, just so we can get a nice black line. And then put a small amount of our acrylic, and we get a brush. I'm going to start, and we're just going to go to start with along the edge. I'm not watering this paint down, I'm using it straight out of the tub. Because if I wash it down, it can end up running in the cracks on the surface. So we're not too bothered if we get it on the underside, because you'll not see the underside once it's in. I'm not too bothered about how thick it is. You'll find that for places it is thicker than others. But if you go and look at the platform edges, and you'll find sometimes, especially on heritage lines, the white line will be more worn in certain places than others and the different thickness of white paint will just give that effect. With the white lines and markings on the platform, you will sometimes see in addition to the white line, other markings, rectangles, painted on, triangles, squares, These denote things like um, points for plugging in um, electrics on coaches, some stations, water points for filling up the uh, toilets on the coaches, and stopping points for the locos, so the train crew. Where they have to stop.
still need to do now. Is quickly pull that away. We'll do it before it dries. Let's put that to one side. As you can see, it's fairly consistent. If you get your next platform piece, put it up. Use masking tape. What we do, just line it up. Put the pressure onto one side to dry and by lining it up with the previous piece I'm just going to ensure that the line is the same thickness throughout. Now that all the paint's dry on the platform surfaces what we want to do is glue them into the final position. It's uh, really simple what we need to do is get some PVA glue and we're just going to pour some PVA glue like that and then maybe great because you can just use your finger I'm going to spread it about a bit tub down I'm just spreading PVA glue all over the platform. So to create this platform surface, it's actually what I've done is glued three lots of card onto some um, soft wood. And once we've got the uh, spread out. You could use a brush or a glue spreader but sometimes it's nice when you're modelling just to get in there with your fingers. First bit. And we'll just place it on top of the glue, like so. As I'm placing the uh, platform surface. The joints are staggered with the surface that's underneath. So there's a joint there, but on the top surface, the joint's there. And the other thing that I've done is the first surface that I've put in is the same size as the timber. The second surface is a little bit wider and as you'll see the top surface is the widest. Railway platforms just have a little bit of an overhang. Um, it's there for safety apparently. So, that's why my model's got it. As you can see, it's all glued down now. I've put some stones on it to weigh it down. Use some paint tubs and a pot of filler. So I'm just going to finish weighting it down, then uh, 
leave it overnight to dry. So that's this platform surface pretty much done. Please feel free to comment, like and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.